Happy Wolf and so is the guy at the bottom right. He gets a bit of camera time today. For Startail, the last player we have... Startail Bomber. Yeah, that's Bomber, not the LGIM player who recently fell the cookie. Was that the wrong overlay? I didn't even see it. <laughs> was no, it, was, it? It was correct. <laughs> I was just making fun of you because you said, I am happy. To the top left, ah. <laughs> in blue, the Frost player for Azubu. He is... Azubu Genius. Oh, now I feel bad. I ruined your joke. It's totally fine because I'm sure some people out there got it. And now they're laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Why is everyone trolling me today? Uh, okay, I think I deserve it. I was probably a bad boy yesterday. I don't know. Barracks for our Star Tail Talent. I want to see some epicness out of you, Bomber. You talk big in the makeup room backstage. I want to see some sick, sick aggression or at least a good strategy. Yeah. So we're gonna find out. Ooh, Bomber goes for a gas. I expected on this map rather a one barracks expand, but he may be expecting void rays from Genius, who wants to play a little bit more aggressive himself. And here comes Genius's probe into the main. He's gonna see that gas. It's very important to see if a Terran player is taking gas in Heartless Swarm because all of the builds you could do in Wings of Liberty with Siege Tanks and Banshees, they're all still there, but there's also more. There's Widow Mines, there are Hellbat drops. He almost killed that SCV. Yep, that was a close one. 10 hit points left, needs to repair a little bit and also make sure that this probe is getting out of there. He's losing a lot of mining time, in fact, having to dodge this probe. Ring around the Rosie here. The Marine is gonna chase him out. Yeah. And meanwhile, this, uh, Zuko Genius is scouted. He will see that second gas. If he doesn't leave right away, yeah, he saw it. Keep in mind, guys, this is the last game. We changed it up a little bit in the GSTL preseason tournament. It is a best of seven, not a best of nine anymore. This means this match is going to decide the entire Yeah, this, this is the end. This is the final match. Now, Bomber has done something cool here. He does a reactor marine expand, so he pulls out a gas and he can make the command center. Yep. Pulls out of gas, only one assimilator at this point mining. Here comes the expansion for Bomber. Genius with a lot of minerals here. Yeah. Probably going to add his own Nexus. He gets the Mothership Core out to be able to secure that. So different ways of securing yeah. a Nexus using that gas. One is a Reactor Marine, the other is for the Mothership Core. Yeah. Mothership Core, of course, what most Protoss players are really excited about. It opens up so many possibilities and opportunities. Yeah. I mean, Genius is skipping the Stalker to get the Mothership Core out a little bit faster. Um, something I think a lot more Protoss are going to become comfortable with as time goes on in this matchup. You know what's funny about the Mothership Core is it, it makes this sound like it's going to do an incredible amount of damage when it attacks, but then it actually yeah. does a very pitiful amount of damage. I really like it though. You know, when the Mothership Core was first introduced, you had still these small maps where you could just fly over the Mothership Core to the Terran player's base and they were one-hitting Marines, basically. Yeah. So you could do so much damage and uh, most Terran players looked at it and like, um, okay, and now <laughs> GG, I guess. That was pretty insane. You Fun can still times. do a lot of pressure with it because it gives vision, but... Not in a situation like this, obviously. The question becomes now, what is next? Genius goes into robotics, so he's playing a pretty standard game here. And Bomber, on the other hand, goes now into his third barracks. So he's going to put some pressure on here. He might even hit a timing, which we've seen yep. already by other players on this map, with Stim, Combat Shields, a bunch of Marauders. Bomber is known for timings with Bio. He is one of those guys who will go up to five barracks without gas, just send a huge Marine Force over to your base. Especially in, uh, I think, at the end of 2010 uh, up to 2011, he was one of those guys who would always go for really aggressive bio pushes against you. He will try to figure out this, uh, yeah, figured this out a little bit more and knew how to counter it, which is when Bomber had a little bit of a slump for a while, but now he got back. He's back on uh, top of things now and doing so well, did so well in Wings of Liberty at the end, doing really well at MLGs, for example, also at the tournament in Texas where Stefano took first place, Lone yeah. Star Clash. And always being just a great asset in the team league, which is what yeah. we see him doing now. He wants to, I feel, with this push here, bait out one of the uh, defensive moves on the Mothership Core. Homer definitely being one of the pillars of his team. Yeah. He doesn't commit to this attack, though. He just shows the Marines and then walks back. Stim has started. E-base 
going up now as well, so he may just transition into going for that medevac-oriented push. In comparison to what we've seen in the last few matches, this is a very, very passive build that is really late game oriented. Both of them are not aiming to get an early win here on this map, but instead trying to secure themselves the uh, second base, getting the tech up, just trying to get stim here for Bomber, of course, with the factory and of the second refinery on the production tab. We have now a lot of potential to get into additional tech. Yeah. And Genius also knows what's going on. He has his observer there, which has been uh, scouted by Bomber. He tries to chase it away, tries to get the scan in. Yeah, he's not quite able to get it because those rocks are there. Genius having double observer, so he's got a lot of vision. And he's not as concerned about drop play in Heart of the Storm as he would be in Wings of Liberty. Because if you do that two-pronged attack in Heart of the Storm where you run in with your bio the natural and then try to drop on the main, all Genius has to do is drop the cannon on his Nexus and then go into his natural and defend. And yeah, the drop can still do damage in the main, but it's going to take so long to do it that he can just eventually push them both back. So for him now, he can try to be a little bit greedier. Yeah. Photon Overcharge is a great, great tool for Protoss. And, well... Here we have the scout, two additional barracks, puts him up to five. Yeah, and finally has that second tech lab down so he can start combat shields. And very importantly, Genius now sees with his observer the timing of the medevacs. He sees that he hasn't been started yet, he's just now switching over. So he knows, okay, make a cannon in my main, get my Colossi out. I think he's going to start poking a little bit. And I feel he should. That's definitely something that he can do now. With the medevacs, I really love to see really good drop play. We talked about... Um, the, just the possibilities for Terra now. There's so much that you can do, and Bomber, he has the multitasking that he needs to really use this to its fullest extent. On the other hand, now with Genius having the Twilight Council here, we also have the first few Colossi on the production tab going into the upgrade, something that Bomber has started a little bit earlier than he. Plus one attack is now about to be completed. And here, the perfect spot for yep. the Observer sees what's going on. Observer right now is set to patrol, so is the Zealot to the north, so you can see a lot of different things. He even has a probe to the bottom left, it's a spot for hidden expansions, also when he drops a micro over there. Gina is very map aware right now. He is facing an army that is stronger than his. It, in fact, at 56 to 42 army supply, but that mothership core and the composition that Genius has just makes this so much easier for him to hold. You know, it's actually a little bit dangerous for Genius to move out like this, especially be I was just about to mention it with the new afterburners. You can really just get into your opponent's base so yeah, easy, exactly. and him in the middle of the map that lends itself to an opportunity for Bomber, and the starter player takes it. Yep, immediately the overcharge is used on the Nexus, and he kills a pile and gets out. So this is a waste of energy for the Mothership Core. You can only use so many of them, two max at a time. Then you have to wait up for another 100 energy. It's like waiting for a Vortex if you want to give it, you know, some sort of comparison. Storm is now being researched for Genius. Really, really important tool here. This is also something that we've seen in Wings of Liberty. Show one Colossus, don't go into range, don't commit too much gas to it, and then change your tech, go straight into the Templar Archive and start your Storm. And you can see that Bomber is falling for the trap here. He's starting with his Viking production. He thinks there is going to be a commitment to Colossi, which is not really the case. Yeah, this is very true. Remember as well, guys, Storm plus Time Warp is one of the scariest things that you could ever experience as a Terran player. Oh you God. cannot split out of that storm if you're in the Time Warp. It's just yeah. not going to happen. So you want to EMP that Mothership Core and the Templar, both if you can. What a beautiful scan for Boma. That is exactly what he needed. Immediately the Ghost Academy. Yeah. He knows what's up. He knows what's up and he only has four Vikings. That's absolutely fine. Four Vikings against the Colossi, no biggie. This factory may cause Genius to move his units out of position for a second, and Bomber could capitalize on that. The upgrades for these two players about to be dead, even at 1-1 apiece. He goes for the factory, Bomber tries to get an angle here with his Vikings. And you know, so far it looks like Bomber's quote-unquote secret weapon has just been standard, solid macro play. He's trying to pick off that Colossus. And he will actually be able to get some more good shots on him. Uh oh, this was a really good scan. He knows exactly where his pos opponent is positioned. And the ghosts are, there's no ghosts here, but the storms are a little bit far behind. Exactly, and he's trying to get in there. And here come those high templars, but already a lot of damage dealt to Genius by Bomber. He did really well here. He took down the Colossus, and he did a lot of damage to the units at the front, to the Zealots. And with that factor and with all this pressure, he's delayed the Nexus of Genius so much that Bomber now has his own third commander up landed, ready to go, transforming right now into an orbital. So economy-wise, he's ahead. He's also ahead about 30 supply. Exactly, he has a really good supply lead. But now here comes Genius trying to chase him away. The Zealots are charging in and a drop in the main base is giving the Bros player trouble though. 
Yeah, that drop in the main is being assisted, of course. Photon overcharge. Yep, Photon overcharge defending pretty well. And meanwhile, Genius, if he can kill this base, that's exactly what he wants. He needs to use these Templar to zone, but they're a little bit too far away. And now but, we have Ghosts. Yeah, and forcing the lift on this was exactly what he needed, though. He was behind in economy. He needed that time to equalize, but he's losing so much in his main base. In the main base, the Photon Overcharge is still active, still doing damage. Here comes the Afterburners. He's trying to head over to the third base, but there are a lot of Stalkers, and they are... Ah, they don't pay attention. Exactly. Barely misses it. But Genius could take a good engagement here. The thing is, he doesn't have Time Warp, so he's going to have to rely on his Storms as he wants to, you know, in Wings of Liberty. Here he goes. Scan goes down. He kills the Ghost. Kills the Ghost. No Storm just yet. But here's the drop, and the drop is doing a lot of damage to the probes. Great but EMP as well. The Temple on the high ground couldn't do anything. Here comes one Storm, but he doesn't have a lot left. There comes the second one. Yeah, I imagine if he had the Mothership Core with this army. Oh, he's trying to chase them down. Yeah, with a Time Warp, this would be devastating. But still, the drop in the main has not, or the natural has not been dealt with. A lot of probes went down there. In total, Bomber has killed 16 workers. Yeah, this is definitely becoming a problem for Genius. Genius is now taking down the factory. Bomber still looking for an opportunity, looking for an EMP. He gets feedback to nice. the Ghost. That's why you got to snipe instead of EMP in a 1v1 situation like that. And, you know, it, he's oh. getting closer here. Yeah, and this is not a position where Genius wants to fight with the army that he has. Going into the choke point, definitely a problem for him. But those storms give Bomber a hard time. Yeah, whoever's on the other side of the choke point is always going to have that advantage. So he wanted to kill those rocks. Bomber has to pull back. Genius takes a supply lead, though, and Bomber doesn't have a fourth chest yet. Yeah. Neither of them do, but Bomber hasn't been able to use this aggressive map control to take another base. Bomber had a bit more of a bank though, and that is what he started to use, and now he's up a little bit surprised. They're actually even right now. This is such a close game, and he yeah. needs to deal with these ghosts once again. And here we go, the first EMPs are being dropped. You have the ghosts in action. The first Colossus is trying to do something. Two of those Vikings trying to take it down, but the Vikings immediately being focused yeah. by the Stalkers. The switch back into Colossi is really giving Bomber some problems right now. He's very Marine heavy with this army as well. I think Genius could take this fight if he gets it. Will Bomber just pick up and use the boosters he's got a choice to make here decides to run them away and then stim gets a good pocket oh. the storm is sick but look at how well he positioned himself against the colossus the colossus is now dead he ate one storm though and that was really annoying but at least he has made sure that the range unit is out of the picture genius has one more storm i'm not sure if he should stick around here he hits the storm second one oh just God. finishes enough energy here the storms are really good even though bomber splits well the storms are just doing too much and now there's the no Arkans. more energy on the medivacs it looks like bomber is out of luck wolf it looks like it. He's losing way too many units. Genius rips through this line. Four medivacs coming over here, but where are the units underneath him? He needs more support. Genius does not have a forward pilot, so he can't end this game, but he is doing a ton of damage, critical damage, in fact. Yes, we have now Bomber in a very, very difficult spot. He's suddenly down in supply. His base is pressured, and it looks like Genius might be able to take the victory here for Team Azubu. Bomber is not out of the picture just yet, but he's down to 37 harvesters, and his third base will probably be hit in just a few seconds once again. Consider, guys, unlike regular Team League, since this is a preseason, this is single a limb, so if Bomber loses, Startail loses, and you won't see them again until the regular season and genius with the manor next so he can actually use oh, photon wow. overcharge on that actually uh, if he wants to fight with it but here it comes he's really going for he's the manor kill the, the command, command center, center. Uh, a good storm uh, here on the bio and bomber looks like he is out of luck he's pulling his scvs here he's pulling the scvs trying to shield those units in the corner a lot of damage dealt to the archons but there's just not enough for Bomber to buy units. Way too much. No Vikings left. Uh, Another Nexus. GG! And Azubu takes their first GSTL victory. Bomber is not able to come through for his team here as the last player. The Terran player dominated here by Genius. And now we have Azubu in the next round. Well played. Really nice usage of the Mothership Core to defend his bases. Playing a great late game with his Templar as well. And that's Azubu's first appearance in Team League. They take a victory. Bomber is happy. Ah, genius. <laughs> yeah, Bomber is not Bomber happy. Bomber is not happy. And Startail will have to wait until the regular season to continue their appearances. Yeah. In the preseason, it's all over for them. Life is once again tired. No surprise there. Yeah, he's always looking exhausted. I don't know when he uh, sleeps, but probably should. Uh, he probably doesn't. That would explain a lot, actually. Aphrodite is not too happy either. She was the first player today and she did everything that was expected from her. From her. She took the win in game number one. But in the end, it is Team Azubu claims victory in this preseason terminal.
tournament round one. Yes. So a sad day for Startail. Of course, they will be able to play in regular season. We have that round robin system coming up. But as far as the preseason goes, their Heart of the Swarm GSTL is now over. Yep. Most of the tournaments in Har uh, sorry in Wings of Liberty are already over. There are a few things that we still have left in the Wings of Liberty. The rest of, of Code A and up and downs. Rest of Code A, the up and downs, and of course the rest of Code, Code S. S. We're gonna have a short interview yeah. in just a moment. Remember, the next match we'll have will be tomorrow. It'll be FXO against Prime. I think we'll probably see a full schedule a little bit later. I want to uh, let you guys know what's happening tomorrow. It's gonna be at the uh, same time at yep. 2 p.m. Korean Standard, 2:10. It's free. Let free. people know. The VODs will also be free and in HQ, so definitely make sure to let everyone know what's happening. And after tomorrow, we have another match on Monday. This is going to be a little bit later, starting at 6.10 Korean Standard Time, and it's going to be Enes Hosa versus Team MVP. That's what it's going to be. So these are the teams kind of lining up, and we've got GSDL three days a week. And then, of course, once the preseason is over, we'll head into yeah. the real season after the release. We have so much StarCraft right now. Not only Code A, but also Code S, GSDL. And let's have a quick look at uh, the interview. StarTail coach is first here. It's not well for them today, but... Just kind of curious oh, about what they're going to do in the future, and uh, you know, it was a pretty fun match. They didn't have a lot of time to practice as well. Yeah, I think they were going to win, but they didn't have a lot of time to practice as well. Yeah, I think they were going to win. Saying like when Aphrodite won the first match, they thought uh, <laughs> she might win the whole thing, but I guess that was not quite the case. Yeah, she called the all kill. Yeah, she did. It's obviously a, oh wow, look at him, he's blue and shy. Yeah. <laughs> Stream didn't even uh, <laughs> play in the Wings of Liberty Code A qualifier because he was uh, practicing so much for the Storm Fuse and Forge's matches. And, well, he showed great games already. Yeah. Oh, he definitely did. You could also see that he wasn't happy with his loss against Genius. That game didn't go as planned. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> 처음 군단의 신작 공식전에서 첫 승을 거두게 되어서 너무 의미 있고요. 네. 어, 앞으로 제 게임. She's very happy that she won the, the first official Heart of the Swarm uh, match in the GSTL. 다음에는 할수 있도록 더 열심히 하는 선수. She didn't get a multi kill today, but she wants to uh, come back out and get a multi kill next time. We would love to see it. 어, 2013년 김가영 선수가 도약하는 해 그리고 GSTL에서도 또 GSL 무대에서도 항상 자주 볼수 있으면 하는 바람입니다. 화이팅 하시고 좋은 경기 부탁드리겠습니다. 수고하셨습니다. 자 이상으로 우리 어, 스타트 팀을 Just 만나봤고 첫 공식전에서 yeah, now, course, 어, 승을 아주부팀의 임성춘 감독님 수고하셨습니다. 축하드립니다. 아, 예, 감사합니다. <웃음> He's happy. You guys probably recognize this coach. Quite a famous figure in Korea. And quite a good speaker, I have to say as well. When you heard that they are facing Startill in the first round of the GSL preseason tournament, they really thought that they didn't have a good chance here. Very tough opponent, for sure. But recently then he saw his players practicing and then he thought, okay, well, I'm actually wrong. Uh, they could have a really good chance today of winning. If we're supposed to win the first match, couldn't quite pull it off. Didn't really turn out as planned. And uh, from that point on, his players did really well. <laughs> he just said he's, he's really, really disappointed with San today. I have never heard a coach talk about his players like that. Well, he said he was today ranked one on the ladder, so... That's why he got the, 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 the rank 1 experience thing. That must be it. Yeah, he got a rank 1 on the ladder, so the coach is actually like pretty close to his players, apparently bantering with them in an official interview. That is awesome, I love it. Oh, ah, nice. So they thought that Bomber might actually come out uh, last. So Genius is was actually already preparing for Bomber the entire time and thought about builds that he could use against him. So he kind of wants to dedicate the win to Genius. Yeah. Well, Genius is doing a great job. 
어, 그간 선수에서 또 이제 해설로 그리고 이제는 감독으로의 그 전환을 하게 되셨는데 아, 소감이 어떠신가요? 아, 저는 이 겉모습만 봤을 때 사실 이 친구들이 좀 like, 많이 놀줄 알았어요. You were a player t h a n coach yeah, and the commentator now coach. How do you feel about all these transitions? 막 인터넷 하고 다른 게임 하지 않을까 걱정했는데 네. 안 해요. 왜안 할까요? 아, 그러니까 말입니다. <웃음> Yeah. When he first met with the players, he didn't really think they would practice really hard. They were playing a lot of other games and searching the internet and doing other stuff. But they, uh, they started to practice really, really hard now. <laughs> He is awesome as a coach. <laughs> He wanted to give the players two days rest, but the players actually wanted to, rest, uh, wanted to practice a lot. Yeah. So it's really important to give players a day to practice, or I mean a day to rest instead of practice. But yeah, it's always up to the player. I love that attitude. Yeah, it's, I really like that. That's very refreshing for a Korean coach. It certainly is. You know, uh, you know, with sports especially, sometimes you take the day before your event to, you know, you do run a little bit, for example, do a little bit of training just to warm your body up, but you don't do anything hardcore because you want to have your body fresh for the next day. And StarCraft mentally, the same thing can be true. Yeah. No, it's definitely true, but apparently the players really wanted to practice quite a lot and it definitely paid off. They did well today, especially Genius in his last match against Bomber, that was not an easy one. But apparently they already expected Bomber to come out last and hey, they prepared in advance, especially Genius, and he won. Yeah. He pulled it off. Great defense there, just using that mothership core to defend the drops and all of the, all of the storms he was able to hit with his positioning on his high templar, always keeping Bomber a little bit guessing as to where his high templar were going to be. Exactly, so we had once again this battle between Storm and EMP is a lot of feedbacks going off. You could really see, especially in one of the last battles, that Bomber tried to get the ghost into position, but then the feedback got off. He didn't get the EMP, and then the storms really did a lot of damage. Yeah. So a great game that we had to close the day off. And therefore, we have Azubu being the first team that wins one of the matches in the GSTL preseason yeah, 2013. Man, ironically, for them, it's their first time in GSTL ever. They yeah. get their win in a completely new game with some old players. That was a bit of a surprising result, I would say. I wasn't so sure who we'd, who we'd see because, you know, Azubu's been playing with some players who aren't playing the GSL. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, you know, we said Startail had Extreme, who's one of those players I'm talking about. One that He's on the other team, but just, I thought Azubu would have more of those players who are not playing in the Kode Qualifier, just kind of sitting and practicing Heartless Swarm all day. Um, and still, it turns out that they were able to advance. Yeah. So right now, what of course, for me, it's really interesting to see what happens when we see Startle the next time because we talked about live playing yesterday in GSL Codas. So he will have a lot more time to prepare now for Heart of the Swan. Yeah. You could hear the coach of Startle talk a little bit about how his players didn't really have a lot of time to get used to the new add-on uh, and that they still need more time to develop strategies and to just know everything that's going on. They had with Dream one player that was preparing a lot for Heart of the Swarm, but all the others still are struggling a little bit and trying to get comfortable. So, I feel that Startail will now completely dedicate their time to uh, Heart of the Swarm, and I can't wait to see them in the regular season. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit sad that they're out of the tournament right now, but that's how things work. Yeah, that's how things work. I mean, it's a single elimination tournament. They were so close. Yeah. Barber was not able to come through his team. He's going to be a little bit disappointed with himself for that, but Azuba had some great strategies plan. They had a lot of dormant players like I was talking about just practicing Heart of the Swarm. Stream really came through for the team though. I think if I had to give a player of the day for Startail, I would give it to him because he was just so solid, good play. Yeah, I didn't expect that from him. No, he did really well and it's one of those things, the way we talked about, we didn't see him too much, and yeah. uh, you just heard why, because he was really doing a lot for Heart of the Swarm instead of Wings of Liberty. But to just have a quick overview of what happened today, we have a look at the match results now, and uh, let's see how this victory for Zubu came to place. Look at that fancy screen, I like it. You can see the breakdown of wins here, and overall, 4-3 Genius was able to take the final two sets, and this will put, of course, Zubu into the round of four. Yep, already in the semifinals. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow at the same time, we have another epic match between FXO and Prime. Yes, FXO and Prime will battle it out tomorrow. Starting player is going to be Lucky and Marine yeah. King. So that should be pretty exciting. That's going to be really good. That's going to be an epic match. And we have our first Zerg player. Tomorrow we will see the first Zerg player in Heart of the Swarm. Then we like come and sit down and Lucky announces he switched to Protoss. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be so funny. I could just I could see a look on your I face. I would right be a now. little bit frustrated <laughs> if that happens. Life trolled me enough today. Uh, let's let's not do that.
But guys, I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. That was the first GSTL Heart of the Swarm match that we ever had. Tell your friends to watch yep. the bots, they're all free. Exactly, the bots are free and they are in HQ. Tomorrow the stream will be free again. Also, the same goes for the VODs. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Once again, 2.10pm Korean Standard Time. See you guys tomorrow.